talk show that comes to you live on AYV television. Um, today we shall be talking about domestic violence. Domestic violence is violence or abuse by one person against another in a domestic setting such as marriage or cohabitation. It is about power, it's about control. It affects the young, old, rich or poor. It affects people of all educational levels, people who come from various religious backgrounds, Domestic violence does not discriminate. Contrary to common belief, a violent person can be educated, they can be illiterate, poor, wealthy, smart, religious, charming, hardworking. They can be a good father or a good mother. They can be kind and passionate when they are happy or calm. So today we are here to talk about this all important um, issue, this all important topic of domestic violence. We want to shine a light on what I refer to as evil conduct of perpetrators of this despicable act. Joining me to help talk about this are my usual lounge members, Willie James, and I also have um, Sadia Maras. She's a member of the lounge and she's um, part of the panel to talk about this all important topic. I have two guests. One is Josephine, Josephine Mami Shaka. She is the owner of Kids World, a clothing store for kids. Welcome to Mam's Lounge, Josephine. I also have Simithi Lavali. She is um, a member of Lawyers, an organization um, of female lawyers that has been providing free legal services to victims of domestic violence. Welcome to the show, Simithi. This is Mamdi's Lounge coming to you from the prestigious Home Suite Hotel in Aberdeen. We shall be right back after this break. Hello and welcome to Mamdi's Lounge. We laugh. <laughs> we cry. With the tastiest guest and the best banter. Signed up by Mamdi's Lounge. Welcome back um, to Mamdi's Lounge. We are at the magnificent home suite hotel right at Aberdeen, where my ladies and I are hanging out today as we discuss domestic violence. In case you're joining us for this very first time on this show, this is Mamdi's Lounge, aired once every week on AYV television. Mamdi's Lounge deals with wide ranging issues in our society, be it social, political, professional, entertainment, etc. We hope to bring these issues up with the help of members of um, the lounge and our guests. We discuss them and suggest ways that some of them can be addressed for the good of all. So in this edition, like I said to you earlier, um, I have members of the Mamdi's Lounge, William James, Sadia, and I also have um, Josephine. She is um, our guest and also Simithi Lavali. They're all here to help us talk about this all important issue. But before I come to them, um, um, let me also remind you that we have um, a victim, somebody who's been affected by domestic violence. We shall also be hearing from her. But first, let me come to my guest. I'll start with you, Josephine. What's your take on domestic violence? In domestic violence, you've already said it's violence in the domestic settings. Um, I see it's more of um, a crime of power and control. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the abuser is being abused and then he thinks um, I've got the power and the control over this person. And we are looking at women especially because mm -hmm. men automatically become the head and they are um, superior to the women, and women we see ourselves to be the weaker vessel, so it's always one person controlling the other. And domestic violence is not just physical violence, mm -hmm. there are different forms of domestic violence, it could be emotional, financial, 
sexual, um, psychological violence. So right. it's not just yeah. when somebody is beating the other person. You can be actually going through domestic violence, but you wouldn't know because it has to do with your emotions and psychological. So that's my answer. All right, William. Well, actually, domestic violence has to do with the culture, the culture that we find ourselves. You find out that in the African setting, men have to pay bride price for women. And because they pay bride price for women, they have this notion that the women are their properties. So um, they just do anything they want to do with the women because the women are properties. You, but there are some other tribes who, when they go to marry, they are women, they say this woman I can't can marry them for sex, basically, and then they are the marriage. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. So, yes. So if the if the when they get into the marriage, if the woman does not um doesn't comply, um at the end of the day she will be violated. So um these are some of the things that, that come up as what they emanate because of the patriarchal society that we find ourselves. So basically you find out that in some cultures Domestic violence is, is a crime, and in some other cultures, it's not a crime. In India, if the woman is promiscuous, the society um, allows the man to do honor killing, or um, they have this acid attacks, although acid, they are trying to fight acid attacks now, but honor killing and all those sort of things is as a result of, they are all part of domestic violence. So, all right, so, um, yeah. let me stop you there, let me hear from the lawyer. Thank you very much. So domestic violence is uh, very serious. As its name suggests, it's domestic and it's violence. So it's violence against somebody in a domestic setting, which is not just an husband and wife. It can be a parent to a child. It can even be your, your stepmother, stepfather, and wider relatives. It can even be a woman against her housemaid or a man against a houseboy. So it's, it's generally it's saying that even when you're in the house setting, you should feel comfortable there. Somebody should not just use that power and control and then humiliate you. Because domestic violence is not just physical, but it's a bit mm -hmm. it psychological, right. which is the words that they say against you. Mm -hmm. It can be emotional, trying to tap in. It can be economic, destroying your assets so that you as a woman cannot work. And it, and it can be even um, sexual. So giving somebody even HIV is, a, is an act of domestic violence. And finally, you have harassment. So it can be somebody who says, I want you. So you know, one time you yeah, follow, you follow, you follow. So there's so many aspects of domestic violence. So the law is saying it is wrong that if we're able to forget our address, that if we're able to go report to the police station and they take action, you should be able to go to court and they take action. So it's a saying out there to people that you, you woman, should not suffer inside. You girl or boy in the house, you should not suffer inside. That there's something the law can do to protect. All right, we'll come to the aspect of the law because I have a personal opinion about. Um, what's happening in our courts in terms of how perpetrators are treated. But we'll come to that um, shortly. Let me come to you, Sadia. Um, so it's interesting to hear all this. Um, I think um, domestic violence is also a cultural thing. Um, in, so, in some cultures in Sierra Leone, um, domestic violence is an, is an act of love. So if man beats like you, it will beat you. Mm -hmm. And then there's a religious argument that a woman is supposed to submit. So if a woman doesn't want to submit, you beat her into submission. And so to a large extent, this is accepted in our society. That's why if a man is beating a woman, nobody goes there until the woman says, they kill me all of Lord come out. So I'll pause there. All right. So I know we are talking today about um, violence against women, but also I'd, um, I'd like to know, I mean, so domestic violence, does it only I mean, happen to a woman? Um, no. <laughs> domestic violence cuts across. It affects a lot of people, including men. But it's uh, in our culture, let's bring culture in it. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Sierra Leone. In our culture, it's difficult for men to come forward to say, my wife is beating me, my girlfriend is done this. But you see people fighting on the streets, girlfriends slapping, boyfriend and that. But it's hardly the men will go to the police station to go with them. The women will go because it's even a shame on the men are supposed mm -hmm. to be the macho in mm -hmm. the family. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to see, see as a superior. So they think, oh no, when I go and how can I go to work and tell my colleagues my husband, my wife is beating me, you know, it dampens their own spirits. It doesn't make them look like so, they are the macho. But if we're looking at it from the um, percentage level, is that, is that not why we are focusing so much on women? Because we think yeah, that women bear the biggest, yeah, general statistics, yeah. 
been yeah. abused more than men. Mm -hmm. But, but, but I have seen men who have who been abused before. They, you were physically? Yes, well, yes, men physically, are supposed to be strong, yes, they're yes, supposed to be... In fact, on the wedding day, the man, the groom was there and he was trying to help with um, things and other sort of things. And apparently he served most of his own guests more than the wife. The, the, the bride, um, sorry, the, 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 the bride. Mm -hmm. And then the bride told him in front of all the people, say, you wait, I will give you the hell. The man ran outside and stood under the tree and started crying. But Willie, that doesn't happen all the time. Oh, I mean, I mean, I think this is an isolated situation, it. right? That's not just a women issue, a community-based issue. Uh -huh. I think if we see it like that, it will be easy for us to address it when it happens to men. Because we are laughing because it's a man, right? Yeah. And this is what happens in the society. This is what happens in our community. We don't take men seriously when they come. Genuinely to say, my wife, and some men are really going through hell in their homes. But just because society shunned on the fact that men are being abused, they don't come forward to say it. And most of their abuse, I think, is psychological. Because you have women who have... Well, I can't, I, you don't use that kind of expression in English, but let me use it. They have mouth. <laughs> <laughs> they are very mouthy. Direct, direct as they, 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 they are mouthy. They are mouthy, very, yeah. very mouthy. And, you know, you have those kinds of women, they, they are good at telling a man how to, All right. how not to have self -esteem. Okay, so talking about women being mouthy, I mean, there's this general school of, I mean, thoughts that women, we are strength is in our mouth. Sometimes we try to put up, you know, with a man or probably try to show them that we, sh we are equally strong by what we say. That's our own defense. Um, women are normally, that's what, that's the general belief that that's women, so, no, they shouldn't justify, but again, there's a saying, woman, if you fall if you fall around for a month, you go kill them. But you know, some men are equally the same. Though. Exactly. Some, some men are equally are the same. So I don't want, so I'm talking about, she's saying that women are a bit my mouth. Some men t say something to you, I mean, you're, you're, you're broken. You know. but, I, but listen, because because like um, just been said, women are considered as weaker vessels. Mm -hmm. Um, they have their mouths as their weapons. Yes, that's what they use. So Absolutely. The so I like that eat, connection because yes. we are considered as weaker vessels. Mm -hmm. So we have something that we want to that's show that we're yeah. that's the, that's what All they right. Use. Okay. So I'll pause here for now and bring in the victim of domestic violence, and we are going to hear our story. Welcome to the show. How much year are you old, first of all? 28. 28, okay. So tell me your story. So you're not supposed to suffer from domestic violence, so, so, so. So explain to me about what you don't go through. Well, it's a long time to the meeting, let me experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm go bow and back. Likewise, we So, the doctor in love, but we not be So, now midnight hour, na it call, we it call. So, go to the talk, but we not be take a make anything serious. So, the reply say, so one time, I be get one phone and son. I be buying a phone doing a nine hundred thousand So, I the phone at me and a coat cover. So you and this man we were already for 10 years yes. and you old 28 years. Yes. So that means it's only 18 years now and now two minutes together. Yes. All right, okay. So you now get picking? Yeah. Okay, I must pick in there. Now one. All right, okay. So you say this woman counts woman at us. Yeah. Okay, where can this woman say be ever like a discuss with you before you count the woman? No, no, that's not ever there. Give it to so you just wake up one morning and you see woman at us? Well, the, say where the woman comes, if the ring and the ace, if they take a photo, they really. They say, middle old, you don't get a post, you will get the left for her. So something like that's normal. So in back up, they take it to make a photo. 
So by the day when the lady come, now I say, okay, it's a serious thing. So when you confront them, what are you should do? What's happen? Well, I cost first to begin cost. So I say, you cost me your parents, I say, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. I'm going to say, well, whatever thing I man they do, man they find. Man just take the hour check. Say, continue. You go offline, you go left me, you go and over. So for now, me and me picking up, go on and all it Because it don't pull me out of the bed, it don't fall. You don't take the phone, you don't get her together, it don't fall and in one day, it don't be. So he even go set the police, he rejects the picking, say that to him, go now. He don't, he don't know. And the policeman there. So first when the policeman can't sign, the face, he can't find out, can say yes, everything about her. So, but this man, they take care of you and the picking, they feed you no, and the picking. No. But this woman had a good eight months, this. One year, this 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 so what can you go police for? Well, what can you go police now? You tell the policeman they say, me let him me come up here now. You know one thing. And the policeman they ask they say, how many years here this man? Now it's now two ten years. So any policeman say no. They say that's not for us. They say yeah, this man who can do two ten years, he just now come up here and like that. If you see all of my tenants, and I also tell us, that's where this man, the one take me on the way, we be saying, we not go expect that. So, then, the policeman asks me, say, what are you doing? And that's where the meter is in a house. Now, me, you know, me, you go need five money. Now, take back. And we go to the MPA office, every damn thing. The documents, every damn time, him, they do everything. So, in the nine hours, they send out to me, get her. And put the place back, when me and two, What's that called? A dinner back, it's not to me get that. So then he goes back, he said, no, he said, that's not for Abu. He said, if you don't deny one thing, you can't deny all that. Then one talks to you, he said, you're not going to answer. So then he goes back, he said, well, he said, choose for the two things. Who's trying to forgive you? He said, you're not going to answer. So how are you to cope now? How, how are you to cope with life with this? Um... Well, I mean, I'll tell you that for now. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for sharing your story with me. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So there you have it. She is a victim. Um, as you've heard a story, we're going to talk a little bit on what she's just um, narrated. Ladies, you have heard she's been married for 10 years. Well, she's been with a man cohabiting for 10 years, actually. And um, you heard from her. So what's your take? And actually, I, I just... You want to come in? No, no, go ahead. Because yeah. I actually want to point out the um, child marriage issue. These are some of the things that will spur up um, domestic violence. Because if you have a child and you... Send to give the child off in marriage when the, I mean at an early age, you know you leave the child at the mercy of the husband, and he does anything to her. So imagine they've been together for ten years. Ten years yeah. So he, she, she was betrothed to him when she was a child. So so these are some of the things that happen in our society, and people look at it and they see it as if I mean it's correct. Mm -hmm. So she mentioned you know, something about talking to her parents, and they asked her to go and you know endure. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay, all right. I'll... Because with our society, mm -hmm. when you listen to her, you can see she has gone through all the phases of domestic violence, be it physical, emotional, financial, sexual, because if the two of you are not sleeping for one year on the same bed, I don't think anything is happening. Mm -hmm. So she's gone through all the phases. And it's so sad that when you go back to people that you trust, like your parents, mm -hmm. because they give back to you, so you have that connection with them, to say, okay, let's talk about this issue, and they ask you to go back. That is what is wrong with our society. Mm. People should come to understand that when somebody goes through domestic violence and they are even bold enough to come out because most of the time they are scared to come out to say, this is what I'm going through. So when somebody like this come out to say, I'm facing this challenge and this is what this man is doing to me, as a family, even if you don't believe her story, mm -hmm. help her, you know, sort that issue out. Don't ask her to go back to the mm -hmm. danger of that violence. And mm. this is what I take from her story. Mm -hmm. 
I think I, I completely agree with you. And I think one thing that parents in our society struggle with, um, <laughs> I'm not speaking for parents, but I think I understand this, is mm -hmm. sometimes they want to tick all the boxes. Mm -hmm. They feel like they've done everything mm -hmm. right by, by cultural standards, whatever standards we have in society. So they will tell you, stay or you know na for beer na for this if you do this not talk not you say do the right thing and for them the right thing is when a man actually comes back and say you know i don't want this woman and some men will never do that mm -hmm. most men will not do that they would rather treat the woman um abuse the woman until she comes to that point where she leaves mm -hmm. so and i think that's the case with Dora. he doesn't want to do the right thing so yeah. he's doing everything to make her leave and if she does leave um obviously she's the one who's going to lose out on everything and clearly by the way she sounds she doesn't want to leave because she says she's been in the house yeah, yeah. She's, invested. she's invested yes she's, invested. she's invested her time money and all oh, now yeah. she's not even sure what the future holds for her so she's she would rather stay in the house and continue to be a victim you know, yeah, rather than just apart from that, society places premium on marriage. So there's this premium. Yes. So if you if you are not if you are divorced, it means that I mean you have a problem as a woman. Yes. You yes, you are blamed yes. for not being able to yes. keep up the marriage. Yeah. So when yes, you are supposed to keep it, yeah. So, so that's the thing. There's so much stigma attached. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's so many facets to this story. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They're married 10 okay. years, they have one child, which probably means that there might be an issue that because she's not having more children. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to find somebody else who can have children. Oh, but Dora should not be the one having to do the I mean, having children is not a, a, a because of the only reason why the marriage should still exist. And she cannot leave because he's not made any provision. I mean, divorce is there, whatever type of marriage you have. And divorce uh, uh, assumes that there will be a relation, there will be some arrangement made for how the child will be cared for and what you give to her if she wasn't really married. You know, and that's not a good, so Dora cannot do it. But apart from that, it's really sad that um, she But I'm um, saying Dora cannot leave, but yet she's suffering in the home. The yeah, husband is not providing for them. Does she, she still have to stay on and continue to be? She does not have to stay on. What I'm saying is, she should not be That's what she's saying. She should not I have nothing here. Yes. Yeah. I have leased the land. Uh -huh. in, the, in the context I bought of the lease, it means that mm -hmm. they have got this piece of land. They have built a structure. Yes. yes. And so she, she has invested. She said her father's a debt in service benefits. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So he wants to now put another woman in the house that she built with her sweat and blood. So in cases like this, lawyers, for example, what do you? How do so you come in? those kind of cases, I mean. Unfortunately, he needs going to court because he's saying even to share the, the whatever the, the assets in the house mm -hmm. because now it's not in debt. Usually, it's in debt we share. Now they are like he has to give up. Either they share it, they sell, they sell whatever they can or this whatever is left of the lease or they sell. We would advise her first of all that um, we would probably call the husband in and warn him that what you're doing is domestic violence under the act. The act can remove the man from the house rather than the other man. He should be the one living the house, not Dora. Mm -hmm. And he should be taking care of her. But the reality is that when you have to go to the high court to get such orders, but usually lawyers will call the person and one. And once he knows there's somebody behind her, as in lawyers who are not going to be afraid to take action against him, you know, see they, they start to comply. Later on, they, they, they default. But the initial compliance is there because he now knows that something happened. And even though she's not been married and had the certificate, yeah. we normally say, Go and register. Right? The act says after five years of cohabitation, the, the registration of marriage and divorce access. If you have lived together continuously for five years, you will be treated as a wife. So you can go and try and get a registration certificate, which then puts her in a better situation. That if he wants to divorce her, he has to go through steps. He has to give her something. He ha she has assets. This is not even like him doing a favor. She has invested her money. And then looking at the child, whether they separate or not. He has to take care of that child. And for us, we will push for that. That maintenance support has to be given to her and to the child. Even if he divorces her, the child he still has to take care of that child until age 18, but he's going to further education until age 21. So there are steps that can be taken. So, what happens in a situation, talking about maintenance of the child, what happens in a situation? where the father is not working. Because she said something about buying meters, providing the land for, you know, so maybe, I'm not saying that's the case, but maybe it could be that this man is not somebody that has a regular uh, job or something to, to go to in the morning. From, uh, okay, from, right. He's a driver, okay. he's, he's mm -hmm. driving, going across the country, he's met this other person. So he does have access to funds. In a scenario where the man doesn't have a job, we will have to find some sort of other way. You mm -hmm. Obviously, you can't take, and water out of stone. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have, he doesn't have, mm -hmm. you know. And then, so he should be the one leaving. Why should he stay in the house? He, he should be the one who should get an order for him to leave the house and, and take care of her if he doesn't have money or whatever. What I'm saying is the law is there. And for any woman out there who's listening to this, 
something can be done. The man cannot just throw you out like I have a new model now. He, he doesn't think you are you are useful exactly. to him. Mm -hmm. You can just bring somebody else in. Mm -hmm. And you woman who you know that this man already has somebody. Remember, you are also a woman. If he's done this to this first woman, mm -hmm. you are also in line for this thing to happen. So let's also treat ourselves with respect. There's a lot of domestic violence because because a third party comes into the relationship. Mm -hmm. And so now he's using threats of violence and actually beating her up and now she's not getting support from the family. So if the family member is also watching, you are supposed to support, it's your flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. This thing that will be a, it doesn't yes. work. Mm -hmm. One day it will, it will lead to death. Mm -hmm. And I've represented actually women on death row who because of domestic violence. There's one lady there who's been there now for 14 years. 14 years because, um, is it 14? 10 years. Um, and she was also similar. She was 17 or 16 when she was in this relationship. And the man used to beat her. And then she said, Leave me alone. Go. I don't want you. The man will still forcefully come back. And then one day he was beating her. And then he chased her into the house. And he was, well, he was just to them on 14 degrees. And he was friendly. So she took the knife and stabbed him. Now she's oh, he's dead. Paying for it. And she's now on, de uh, on death row. We're trying to do that appeal saying domestic violence. I mean, that's, people also need to know that. That if you do not treat domestic violence, it will end up with something serious. Yes. Now, Dora's there. She has nowhere to go. She's yeah. not willing to go. Uh -huh. What will happen if there's a big fight? Somebody dies. Then what we will be looking at is murder. They will, the police will not look at the domestic violence that has occurred. Mm -hmm. But all the actions that are going on, instead they will just say somebody has died. And that's what you have to pay the penalty. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that family members, anybody who's supporting, say, that once it starts, you have to deal with it or else something else is going to happen. So one thing also that normally happens, you know, when someone gets married, you know, you, your family, you know, you take your family along, your family is marrying into another family. So we're talking for about, ha threads. for well, for certain, okay, let's see for certain mm -hmm. tribes. But generally that's the case because yeah. you most times have families coming together as a result of two children, you know, be, I mean, getting together in marriage. So let's say um, you have a family, because I think that's another issue also that is affecting um, people. So people are suffering in silence because of their families. So like she mentioned, um, she mentioned something about going to her mother, mm -hmm. and her mother says, you go there and, and endure. You understand? So I think, well, what do you think should be the role of the family? Because you need that support. If, for example, she leaves the house, you know, and decides to go out in the wild world, she does not know what lies ahead. She doesn't have money, she doesn't have a house, she doesn't have anything to start off with. So what kind of support do you think the family should provide to make sure that, I mean, if your child or your, your, your is in an abusive marriage, for example, these are the kind of support we need to give as a family to make sure that we save her or him. Absolutely, the family should be the bedrock. But not everybody has maybe a loving and caring family. Mm -hmm. So they are also, the, the government has a responsibility to actually protect people. One of the reasons why domestic violence victims and all survivors cannot continue construction matters because we don't have all those safe homes. The gov, even though the act says they should set up places where you can go and stay for a while to support you through mm -hmm. the transition, mm -hmm. we don't have that. We have NGOs who have it, but the government itself needs to commit funds to having that because they now will allow the person to go rest somewhere. In some communities like in Kenema, Kaila, Nkola, where the IRC have, they have the women's action group, they have a structure that they have built. It was created during the war as in a place where they could have security. And what happens is they, they, the chiefs that everybody knows in this area, that if a woman runs to that place, no man can go around that place. And in there, there's, they have clothes, they have food and whatever, and she can sit there for a while. It's a taboo. The man goes there, he has committed an offense. So the woman is able to go there, and then these women now go back to the home, try and resolve the issue. If it's not something I can resolve, then the family comes in. Mm -hmm. So we're saying to those even who are family members, if your daughter is coming to report to you that this is happening, it's not saying go and bear. Go and bear and she dies, then you have lost. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you saying that... Well, the, well, so the church yeah, too, the church... Uh -huh. So you know, I mentioned something like domestic violence is not just a um, woman issue, mm -hmm. it's a community issue. Mm -hmm. So community-wise, she's mentioned family, work, your employees as well, mm -hmm. employer employee relationship, mm -hmm. friends as well. Let's say she's my close friend. If I realize something is off about her, I should be able to help her out as a friend, mm -hmm. not tell her that I go and bear. As friends as well, we have to be sensitive, and as employers and employees as well, you should be able to identify those that you think probably are going through a challenge. You can call them aside. But there can be that can be that, that there can be also a bit dicey. For example, let's say you um like you mentioned she being your friend yeah. 
and this is her business because we have a situation where people say this is my business you know and marriage honestly when you're in, a, in an intimate relationship you the outsider tend you should be careful what you say because most times the stories are half told so what I'm, I'm trying to say is not like you impose them you should be that kind of person that when she's ready mm -hmm. to open up and talk about it, you mm -hmm. should be there to receive. Because there are some people, when you are ready to talk to them, they don't want to know because they start putting up at you. Even in the beginning, even tell me, the, why are you coming now to tell me when mm -hmm. it's almost over or when mm -hmm. you want to leave? Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, as, as friends, family, community, we should be sensitive enough to say that, okay, fine, let's yeah. get this person support from afar. If she doesn't want us to come close, but the day she decides, I want to get out, mm -hmm. the day she decides, this is it for me. Okay. You should give her that support and take her in. This is what I'm trying to okay. say. And do we, another thing, sorry, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Okay. Uh -huh. we, we have to know that not everyone is got out to be a counselor. So where are the counselors? We have to have, I don't know, maybe you have UN agencies or NGOs watching this show, but we need to have counseling centers all over the place. Just so, um, I mean, they're there to help women who go through these things, to counsel them. Because that is one thing we lack in this, in this nation, even with mental health. You find out that people are going through some of these things and they don't have professionals to counsel them. So, um, and then you will find out that when they come to the offices, like you are saying, you meet someone there and they explain their stories to them. The counsel that they give are not wise counsels. And then at the end of the day, they end up falling into more trouble. So we have to be careful. That's why people are, they, 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 they tend to suffer in silence and they, they are choosy as to who they, they talk, talk to. to. And again, because of the society we find ourselves, you, mm -hmm. can, you can open up to a person thinking that, yeah, you, you know, you, you, you hope the person, or the person will keep your, whatever discussion you have, secret. But then she has a friend and that friend has a friend. So that's how the whole, so mm -hmm. those are some of the things that kind of keep people, you know, let people hold back to some of these issues, even though in the rightful way of doing things, they should be able to discuss it with other people. Uh -huh. I think it's also because um, sometimes people are victims and they don't know it. So if you try to tell someone, they might even be offended. So if a man doesn't, say a man fails to provide for the family, say he decides not to be a child mother, a woman doesn't see that, so a woman doesn't see that as domestic abuse or domestic violence. No, the man just not pull money. Or maybe they had an argument and then she spoke back or something and then he gave her a slap. No, no, because I talked to her a certain way. So there's always an explanation for why a man behaves a certain way. So if you you come in and then you try to talk to that woman and say, no, you know what you're going through, this is abuse. I mean, most women will be like, no, 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 this is not abuse. This man is a nice man. I mean, like you said in the opening, mm -hmm. um, Abusers can be can charming, be, mm -hmm. they can be good fathers, good mothers, so somebody will be like, oh, he's a good father, he mm -hmm. provides for the family, you know when he's happy, he's like this, it's because I did something, this mm -hmm. is why you acted. Or maybe this. I said so something, There's yeah. always this justification, and I, so that's why I think part of the reason why we're having this conversation is helping people understand that, that there would always be reasons, mm -hmm. if, if you choose to focus on them, for helping people understand and identify the traits of abusers. Um, so it's beyond the law, because the law can be there, law enforcement is there and everything, but people will never take advantage of it. If, first of all, you don't understand that it's never your fault if you are abused and that it's not acceptable. All right, so I like the point you mentioned about victims. Hold on. I like the point that you mentioned about victims and people being victims and they do not know. So how do you know that you are a victim of domestic violence, for example? Okay, okay. with listed the types of domestic violence, mm -hmm. um, I think the easiest one to identify is when the person hits you. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, if you are with somebody, every time you see the person, you don't feel happy. It's like you rather spend more time out there right. than to be with the person. Mm -hmm. You are being abused in a way that you can't identify yet, mm -hmm. but there's an abuse. Mm -hmm. If financially, all your financial decision depends on the consent of the other person, it's nice when you are married, you both make a decision. But if you go to town, you see something that you think is the house needs, you quickly buy it, and you come back and it's a big issue in your house, you need to check that. Because, yeah, you need to check that because you are buying something for the house, and you think you don't need approval from your husband to spend 30,000 mm -hmm. euros. This is not something that should be a big because issue. this is your house. It is your it is our, our house. house yes. But if this simple things provokes the man to be saying things to you, you are a big spender. You do this. You do this. Wasteful. It's just once in a while, <laughs> and then anytime he is upset, as a married couple, he doesn't want to touch you. 
but when he you are upset he doesn't want to talk about your feelings but he just wants to pound on you mm -hmm. you should check that that it's been abusive but just as we said it is normal to us all this is normal there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with yeah there's nothing so it's very difficult for us to understand that you are being abused because you see, it's as very, very normal that, okay, me too, why did I go to town to buy it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But under normal circumstance, if you are single, you should be able to do things. You should be able to do certain things that you used to do before, even when you come to a marriage. Though you are together, you take consent from your spouse, mm -hmm. but it should not be in fear that if I go home and I've done this, he's going to pounce on me, he's going to be upset, he's not going to talk to me. Mm -hmm. no. So I think... I agree. And one more. <laughs> I agree with that we talked about. I think when people are dating, there's so many things you overlook and you think it's love. Mm -hmm. So if a man wants you all to himself, and you should oh, not have protection. friends. Yes. Think, oh, so he loves, loves me. me. Yes. And then you're married and he wants to isolate you from everyone. I think uh, you mentioned it earlier, um, that that's a sign of abuse because then if he isolates you from family and friends, so he can do whatever he wants to you and you have nobody to to want to uh, anybody to speak up for you so uh, and this aspect of finance that just we was talking about you notice that most women they work they are in homes with their husbands and they think the 50 50 issue is i mean should not be should not go further to finance in the fact to the financial aspect so they are not supposed to to um, contribute in the home the same amount that the husband is contributing. So you can always say, nine for spend, <laughs> nine for spend. So how do you see that? You know, because most of the time that is what we do. We talk about, um, we say 50-50, we are fighting for equal yeah, rights. Yeah. And then when it comes to financial contributions, it's 100, we, yes, 80, you say, no, this one is supposed to be, or the man go all the way. Exactly. And you find out that at the end of the day, they are so, they are so dependent on the man. If the man does everything, so he thinks, I mean, he lords it over the woman. He thinks he's in charge. But he's in charge. He asserts himself. He asserts his position. Well, really, I also there are men who do that. Exactly. Enjoy enjoy exactly. Problem. No, 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 no. A and we have homes. No, we should not be content with the fact that the men should do it with the job. I wouldn't no, 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 say no, no, we should not no, be no, content. I'm saying, saying it depends on who you're dealing no, with. No, no, <laughs> because no, that is why you're dealing with. telling them that, if you are telling you are giving them space to become idle, to become dependent on men. So if the man says, sign, if the man says, all right, so if the man says all through, all right, so I'm going to be there. All right, yes, just me, you can come in. Relationship is different. Uh huh. You have to look at the person you are dealing with. Absolutely. Some yes, people, every you see it's when it's finance now. Everybody's ganging up against you. No, 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 we're not. Everyone is ganging up. We're not ganging up against you. No. Oh. Some some men some men are happy uh -huh. when you provide hundred percent. Yes. And, I'll be happy and then it is a joy to them when today the woman says you'll be happy when your husband provides hundred percent. I'm gonna do everything with my money. I'm treating you. It's a plus. Yes. You get my point. Uh huh. But to them it's a joy when the woman supports. They see that this is my support. But most of everything that concerns the housekeeping, children, what education-wise, everything is on the man. It's not a burden. I just have a problem all right. So no, 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 I'm not saying that I is the norm. I'm saying every relationship, relationship is different. All right. So before, I okay, Josephine, I'll that. stop you there. Let me hear from Simiti yes. quickly. I'll don't worry. I'll let you. That's the fifty feet is not just about um, financial. I thank you because you also forgot to mention about childcare. Should you also have fifty fifty on childcare? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm talking. Basically, fifty fifty. Yeah, you don't actually. Basically, that's what I'm saying. Okay. All right, ladies. All right. So let's hear. Let's hear. Everything is done fifty fifty. That's where I come from. So that's why I find it difficult when women say, oh, let the man take care of the financial body. Oh, let the woman take care of the house chores. Because that's where I'm coming from. The background I'm coming from, everything is 50 50. You All right. Like that's okay. in every situation. No, situation. Yeah. Well, exactly. Well, that's the point. Generalize. It's not, yes. We don't, so we're not right now, yes. we're not generalizing it, but when women no. are comfortable with the some fact women. that when, when some, some women, women qualify, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so qualify. All right. Men who take pride in taking care of the woman say they just want the woman to look good, say, you can work. But whatever you make, whatever you want to do, that is how it starts. In fact,
exact instance. Some will tell you. Some will tell you. So, no, no, no. It allows you. Some will tell you that my wife should not work. Listen, when it comes to when it comes to the man giving, you don't have a problem with that. But when it comes to the man saying that every decision that has to be made here, because I am the one giving, so every decision that has to be made here, it has to be be made by me, hundred percent holy. You have a problem. No, no, you have some men. No, listen, All right, okay. You have a All right. So All if right. the man is saying, if the man is taking okay. care of you, will yes. providing everything, then I'll, you might as well take all the decisions. All right, I'll pause. All right, Chess. Hold, yes. hold on, hold on, hold on. You said you have your, you have your word. Hold on. Uh huh. You, you will have you your say. Hold on, hold on. Relationship, communication. Mm -hmm. She says something. If you have a good communication, um, how do I say it? If you have good communication with your spouse, mm -hmm. you will know when things are going certain way. Mm -hmm. When the man says. Oh, I want you to look good. I want to take care of everything. It depends on how he says it. Some say it in a sarcastic way. Some say it from the point of love. Every relationship is different. If you have good communications with your husband or your, your, your boyfriend or whatever, when he says something, you can actually tell whether this person means it or he's saying it in a way to control me. So communication comes in. That is when you can identify, is this controlling mechanism or this is just an act of love? Then you as an individual make a decision. No, I don't want to sit at home and do nothing for you to take care of me. If you have good communication, that man should understand that, okay, fine, this, man doesn't, this woman doesn't want to sit at home. She wants to do something by herself. All right, so this is Mandy's Lounge coming to you on AYV television. We continue with the conversation. Sadia, you were going to say something? Yes, I totally agree with you. <laughs> so, so, okay. Okay. No, 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 let, no. Me, let me say, I would not... Um, so we talk about this, that when people are not saying me go school for go land, go clan, and sit on our house, right? I agree. But I think, like we said, it depends on the relationship. There are men who take pride in that. If a man wants you to be a trophy wife, I think you would know. Yeah. Oh, don't do anything, I'll take care of you. Yeah. It's when he says, don't do anything, I'll take care of you. I think that's, that's where, where the, the problem, problem is. Yes. Absolutely. If he says you can do what you want to do, you can go after your dreams, and, I will, still and take care I will still take care of you. That's different. But when a man says, don't do anything, you can stay at home, just take care of the family, I'll go to work. Sadia, what I'm questioning, why should the man say, to go after your dreams and I will take care of you? Why? Wait, why so what is your... Let me learn. Why, why, why do you get to the point where you allow the man to say... Don't do anything, I will take care of you. Just go after your dreams, I will take care of you. Why don't you don't have no, that's what I'm saying? So, it's, so, yes, so, that, that's yes, what I'm so saying. I was going to come. Why should you be content with so, that? So, that brings me, that brings me, bring something so that brings me, yes, that's what we are. So, that, so that brings me, can I use myself as an example? Uh huh, okay. <laughs> I came to Sierra Leone, I didn't know anybody here, started looking for jobs. I had a baby with me, I didn't know anybody, so it's not easy for me to leave the child with anybody that I don't know, I don't have family here. My husband was like, okay, you don't need to work, I'm going to take care of you and everything. Fine. I when blessed in context. No, hold on. I said, I said, <laughs> hold on, no hold way. on, hold on. Every relationship is hold different. Hold on, yes. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Every relationship is yes, different, that's I did true. That for a, diff a couple of years. Mm -hmm. After the second baby came, I said, you know what, it's not easy just to tell from doing something. I said, I know I don't want to do a five to eight job because of the kids, because sometimes I'm at home, they call me, one of them is saying, this is that, you need to ration it now. And my husband travels. So that's where communication time, comes in. So we need somebody to be stable. Communication. So I decided, mm -hmm. okay, fine. Instead of sitting at home doing nothing, just because they think sitting at home looking after kids is nothing, but it's something. I said, let me open it's my It's everything. Yeah. Something oh, yeah. I'm passionate about. Yes. So I started my business. Now I'm there. I have my own money. He has his own money. Though he's still taking care of me and my family. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that's why I say communication, and it depends on the kind of person you are with. Some people will say that it will get to a point it becomes a burden. All right, so we have to continue with the program. Let me come on to the next. Because um, I was going to come on to the domestic violence. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes, domestic violence is what we're discussing. Um, I come to you, Simithi. Now, the law. Someone mentioned earlier that um, maybe going to the police station, um, police treat the, these issues the way they do because they don't know the laws. I totally disagree. Some do know the laws, but of course, for example, let's say uh, my husband beats me up. I walk to the police station to make a complaint, and the police ask me, who is a person that did this to you? I say, my husband. They will say to you, when I go to the when I go solve that. Mm -hmm. It's not because they don't know the laws, right? So, I mean, I just think that we need to do more as um, a unit, all of us, people, yeah. you know, to make sure that some of these issues are addressed and addressed well. 
So I would say something on the judiciary, but the police, for example, you know, I think they also are not helping. I don't, I'm not without wanting to yeah, cast. No, yes, Mamdi, Mamdi, because you, you know you are right. Because she said, the, the lady we interviewed, mm -hmm. she said when they got to the police, the police, uh, it was there they started thinking about how to distribute the. So I was going to, I, I was actually going to ask her, I mean, how far does the police go in terms of mitigating mm -hmm. these issues? Okay, so the, um, the role of the police in domestic violence is to take the complaint, take the victim, to a place of safety, give them a medical report, and then investigate, and then seek advice from the director of public prosecutions. And if he says go ahead, they can charge the matter to go. That's usually the procedure. But there's also the um, allows a lawyer to actually go for what they call protection orders, which could say remove the man from the room, pay maintenance, support, stop your threats against this woman, or lock you up, things like that. But most times the protection orders are not put in place. So going back to the question you asked. The family support units are people who have been trained on domestic violence and sexual and gender-based violence issues in Kenya. The problem is sometimes um, they, a lot of them move around, and then sometimes the case might not be an FSU case, it might become one in a CID, and then there's a problem because CID are not trained. Mm -hmm. But once you go to FSU, their mandate before was to deal with these issues and charge them straight to court, as what the act says. But they realize in our context that if you charge a matter to court, it's almost automatic divorce. So they said, and they used to call them glucose. If you ask the office, they are saying that glucose means. So they said, no, let's change uh, the mindset about what FS means. We want people to come to find their family support units. To support. Mm -hmm. You know, it's called family support. So when you come, they have now taken it upon themselves, even though it's not within the law, to do mediation, which is look at the issues. And you've got this report, but what's, her, what's the real underlying issue? And as you see from my report, the husband went to report her, saying, get out of my house, which is strange, because really the police are not the ones who are supposed to do divorce. He should mm. have gone to a normal place. Mm. But he <coughs> say, I want this woman out of the house. And the police now say, what is the problem? And now they've seen that the problem is not that he wants her out. It is an issue of, there's some domestic violence there. There's an issue of family separation. So now they're saying, let's bring the parties together and let's discuss. And then they're coming on board and starting to see what Dora is saying and what the husband is saying. So that is part of their role. But um, officers are part of the society. So if you have a male officer, a female officer, they are also coming. If they're married people, they can't handle this married situation. So that's why we have the problem. The law is saying one thing, but the reality is that if they're thinking, she's a young lady, she's got a child. If you say, okay, just please go, what is going to happen to them? They're also looking at all of that. How is it going to, how can they be separated? You know, so even though it might be outside of their yeah, mandate to do the first and everything, but they will look at how they can resolve this issue in the best interest. However, they cannot impose, they cannot impose upon two parties what to do. And if he says, he says he wants to charge his matter to court, usually, unfortunately, the first person who reports it is their case that they take. If she wants her matter to be dealt with, she would have to go and make a separate report to, to handle that. So um, that's where the, the problem is. But to say they don't know the law, and all the people who work in family support you need to know the law. But it's how do you apply the law in a way that is in the best interest of the party? Because most women will say, I know I lost in my house. So how do you deal with that? Or, eh, not go lock me man up. Because you lock me man up, in fact, they will say, this woman I don't want you. And even um, I did a study on the impact of the Gender Act for 10 years. And we even are going to court and ask the judges. And they said, the judge imagine someone saying, if a woman comes and takes her husband to court, just know she's not ready, she's ready for divorce. Mm -hmm. You know? So they themselves even that. So some of them even when they go to court, why we sometimes hear of the matters not really proceeding? Because some of them say, let's try mediate as well. <coughs> we have mediation going on in the police station. We have also mediation going in court. Some of it, the, the act, the law says you can mediate in non-violence matters. When violence matters, you have to take this law. So it's that tension. How do we really handle this situation? We don't have a safe home. So how can we tell this woman? Yes, we got your man. He's going to go kick you out of the house. Like now, he's indirectly kicked her out. Mm -hmm. She's not in the she's not in the bedroom. She's not even sleeping on a, on a, on a mat that's a, 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 a mattress that probably both of them their bodies went to together. Mm -hmm. He's doing it deliberately. So she's sleeping on the floor, which fine dry season. What is this dry season? What other, you know? All right. So a lot has been said about this, about this topic. So now let's try to wrap it up. So um, I want to know, you know, what are the hints? How do you tell 
because like I said in the intro, domestic, so these ab abusers most of the time, they can be kind, they can be charming, you know, they can be nice. You don't see somebody and then tell that this person is this sort of person. I mean, like you see somebody, you cannot tell by looking at them that this person is, a, is an abuser. So how do you... When the person says, I want to do everything for you. <laughs> everything, <laughs> yes, I'm going to bring it up again. Like, when the person so, says, so, I want to bring it up so, again. Okay, so that's your take. So we let says, <laughs> we can tell <laughs> that somebody is an abuser when the person down, says, I want to do everything for you. Everything how do you... Everything. That's our take. Okay, so what's your take? Somebody who is overprotective. Right. And somebody who is too private and secretive. Somebody whose uh, sense of humor is like um, biting, kind of like you asking, Oh, how do I look in this store? I didn't realize they had enough materials to sue for you. Trying to say you are big, somebody who says things to demean you, uh -huh. to bring your self esteem down. Okay. These are the signs of somebody who's abusive. Yes. Yeah. Let me hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the physical <laughs> is bruising you, if it's uh, if he, uh, using as she said, negative words, but also if. Whenever you want to say you want to work, it stops you. Like if you have business, you will destroy the business money. Or if you have, say, like a fridge, you will destroy the fridge so you cannot sell eyes. So someone who's preventing you from economically empowering yourself mm -hmm. is also inside of an Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So um, I'm, I'm thinking, and <laughs> thinking about yeah, me. Thinking, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think um, the science, so it's good that we're talking about the science, but I just have to say this, that sometimes you don't even see these things. Why exactly. So, uh, yeah. Because like you mentioned, I'll go back to what you said in the opening, some people can be so charming. And it doesn't, and it's, you cannot tell so from the way they look or the way they talk. A woman would be abused, but then the man comes and sweet talks her and she goes back mm -hmm. because he knows her weak points. So mm -hmm. I think they can be very manipulative, they know how to play to your weak points. Mm -hmm. And I think also it's how people react to certain situations. Sometimes mm -hmm. they just overreact, maybe in public, they, they just bust into fury or something and then embarrass you or something. That's <coughs> a sign that you're dealing with an abuser. And I think for me, it's generally how you treat other people. It's not just you. It's how a man treats other people. I, I'm not saying a flat. A flat comes and then they flat with different women. But there's a certain level of, res of respect a man has towards people, especially women in general. Like you can tell whether this is a nice person or not. And if a man doesn't have that track record, I think that's something that you should be Let me have my own say. Okay, so we let, no, you have, you said, okay. So, uh huh? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Do we Sorry, I'll come to you. Nice to every other person. But when it comes to that single person, they single are because they have the power and the control yes. over you. Mm -hmm. They don't have power and control over, over all of us. Yeah. You can go out with an abusive guy. He is, he'll buy every lady yeah. drink. Mm -hmm. so he treats you like, oh, you drink too much, you're an alcoholic, you know. Mm -hmm. To you, he treats you differently. So that can be very, very difficult to, to relate. And another thing I wanted to bring out is somebody who makes different kinds of rules. Today, the rule is. Uh, I don't want any of your friends in this house. Next day, oh, can you call this your friend? I need some money. He makes the rules when it suits him. Mm -hmm. When it comes to you, the rule is different. But when it comes to him, he changes the rule to suit himself. So somebody like that, you can So I'll let Willet have her own take <laughs> before we wrap up the program. Yes, we're, so we're wrapping up now. So Willet, yes. Another thing we are failing to realize is most times some of these people are sick. They have mental disorders. I'm telling you, <laughs> sincerely. <laughs> I've watched a story where the guy had um, um, some kind of, uh, what was it now, something in his brain that mm -hmm. led him, sorry, tumor, tumor oh. in his brain that led him oh. to do all those sort of oh. things. And when the tumor oh. was removed, it was, it was actually it was normal. Oh. It was normal. So we, our society is not, <laughs> you understand what I mean? Okay. Yes. okay. So yes. Yes. No, our society no, is not no. structured in a way uh -huh. where we get the facilities to detect some of these things. You are laughing at Williet, but Williet is saying. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not laughing at you. So, all right, ladies. So, all right. Viewers, I, this has been the discussion on domestic violence. Um, and I hope you have learned something about this all important topic. I need not go through all of what we've said, but a lot has been said. A lot of submissions have been made, have been made. and I'll just quickly go through um, what I, I'll just go through what I just started, what I started with initially. So um, for me, domestic violence is about power and control. It affects the young, the old, it affects the rich, the poor, it affects people of all educational levels. People who come from various religious backgrounds. You can imagine some people, pastors, mm -hmm. imams. You know, so domestic violence does not discriminate. So there's this belief 
that a, a violent person can, cannot be, maybe a violent person is illiterate, that's why he or she is being uh, violent. No. But they can be educated, they can be illiterate, they can be poor, wealthy, smart, religious, and what have you. So I hope we have been able to answer a few questions that you had in mind concerning this all-important topic. Until we will come your way in another edition of the program. Our Mambi's Lounge, it has been William James, Sadia, Simithi, and Josephine on the lounge today. Thanks for having us in your homes. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to Mambi's Lounge. We laugh. <laughs> we cry. With the tastiest guest and the best banter. Signed up by Mamdi's Lounge.